Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over defensive systems and elint for the Vigan. The Vigan has three defensive systems. It has the countermeasures pod, the jammer pod, and the RWR. Let's go over the countermeasures pod first. To equip the pod, you click backslash on your keyboard, you click ground crew, rearm, and you can equip it on pylon 2 and 6. You right click, hover over pods, and the countermeasures pod is the one that says KB flare shaft dispenser. You can equip one or you can equip two if you want. These are what the pods look like. There's two ways to dispense countermeasures. You can do the quick release or you can do the programs. Let's go over quick release first. For quick release, you need to have this button binded to your stick, fast countermeasures dispense. The countermeasures control panel is down here on the right. For quick release, the only control that matters is this one here. If you have it set to R, it will dispense chaff, F for flare, and RF for both. When you press the quick release button, it will start dispensing chaff and flare, and when you press it again, it will stop. Now let's go over the program mode. In program mode, you can only dispense chaff, so make sure this switch is in the middle or is on R. These two switches control the programs. If you have it on zero, it's off and it won't do anything. One will dispense quickly, and three will dispense slowly. Two will dispense quickly just like mode one, but two will have a pause. So two will dispense a bunch quickly and then it will pause and then it will dispense a bunch more. So you set it to whichever program you want and then you use this switch right here. In the middle it's off. If you right click it to the int position, it will dispense countermeasures for a little bit and then it will flip back to the middle and it will stop. If you left click it to the cont position, it will just keep dispensing. Here's what program one looks like. Here's what program 2 looks like. And here's program 3. There's also one extra program you can do that only works if you have two pods equipped. If you have two countermeasures pods equipped, you can set this to 0, and you can set this to 4, and when you do that, it will continuously dispense until that pod runs out, and then it will start doing the other one. You can see right now, it's dispensing my left pod, and when the left pod runs out, it'll do the right pod. Keep in mind, when you're doing this program, this switch will not do anything. Even if the switch is off, it'll just keep dispensing. There's also this position that says A. I'm guessing A is for automatic, but it doesn't seem like it does anything, and the manual doesn't mention it, so I'm guessing it just does nothing. Now let's go over the RWR. The RWR is a thing in the plane that detects radar waves and shows you where they're coming from. The RWR display is around the radar. You can see these lines going around the radar screen. These are all lights, and when your plane is hit with a radar wave, it will light up one of these depending on where it's coming from. If this top right one lights up, that means there is a radar wave coming somewhere in front to the right of me. This switch right here controls the RWR. If you have it on the left, it's off. If you have it in the middle, it's light only. So these lights will work, but you won't hear anything. And if you have it on the right, it's lights and sound. So when a radar wave hits you, you'll be able to hear a sound. You can see these lights are coming up now, so there's something off to the left, and you can also hear the beeps. You can adjust the volume with this switch right here. The tone of the radar beeps depends on the frequency of the radar waves, so every radar will have a different tone. Now let's go over the jammer. The jammer in the Vigan is also a pod, just like the countermeasures. You equip it with backslash, ground crew, rearm and refuel. The jammer only goes on pylon 6, and there's two versions. There's the U-22 jammer and the U-22A, which is the more modern version. The regular U-22 is just for jamming. The U-22A can also do elint, which I'll talk about later. U-22 and the U-22A both look pretty much the same, and this is what they look like. I'll go over the regular U-22 first, because the controls are a little bit different between the two. You control the jammer with these two controls right here. If you're using the regular U-22 pod, this switch doesn't matter you only have to worry about this one. If you have it pointing to zero, it will be off. When the pod is off, you'll see this warning light here. And once again, right now I'm going over the controls for the older U-22 pod. I'll go over the controls for the U-22A next. So for the older U-22, zero is off. If you put it to B, it puts it into warm-up mode. It takes three minutes to warm up. Once it's warmed up, this light will go out. If you put it to A, it will start jamming if it detects a radar signal. The way you'll know it's jamming is because a light will come on here. If you put it into E, 
then it will just start jamming no matter what. As you can see, the light has come on, it is just continuously jamming. Also, if you're using it in mode A, where it jams when it detects a signal, for that to work, you need to have the RWR on. I have the RWR on right now, and I'm getting hit by radar waves, and you can see it's jamming. But if I turn the RWR off, it's not jamming anymore. That was the U22 pod, now let's go over the newer U22A. With the U22A pod, you have to use both of these controls. If you have this set to zero, then it will be off, just like the regular U22. And you also have to warm this one up, but you warm it up differently. In the regular U22, we warmed it up by putting it to B. In the U22A, you warm it up by putting this switch to A, and putting this switch to F. You can see the light has come on now, so I need to wait three minutes. By the way, while you're waiting for this to warm up, if this light starts blinking, that means there's a problem and you need to restart it by hitting the master caution. Once the pod is warmed up, if you have it set to B, D, or E, all of those are emitting modes. When it detects a radar wave, it will emit. And if you have it set to A, that is the ELINT mode. The ELINT mode is where it will not emit anything, it will just record signals, and it will process them, and when you land, you can open your kneeboard and it will give you information about what it recorded. If you have it set to A and G, it will record on low sensitivity, H and J are high sensitivity, and K will switch back and forth between low and high sensitivity. And you need to make sure your RWR is on. I'm going to fly near a radar and then I'm going to land and I will show you that it will give me information. I have landed and if you hold right shift and click K on your keyboard and you use these arrows down here to go to this page that says ELINT. When I switch my master mode to standby, you can see it gives information that it collected. It doesn't give the exact coordinates of the transmitter but it gives you coordinates to draw a box of where the estimate location is. It gives you the northwest and the southeast corner of the box. For the northwest, you can see it's 4214, 4159. So if I go to 4214 and then 4159 on the map, I'm gonna place my ruler there. And the southeast coordinate is 4213, 4216. I put my ruler at the northeast coordinate here and the southwest coordinate. So if I were to draw a box, my target would be somewhere in here. Now this is actually very inaccurate. My target's actually over here. The reason why is because I basically just flew in a straight line. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to fly around where you think your target is and then land. And then it will give you coordinates for a box where the target is probably inside of. The other cool thing is that it will also give you flight plans you can use for your data card. If you go back to this kneeboard page here, you can see right now my data card is using the mission editor. So my waypoints will be based on whatever I set up in the mission editor. But if you hold left control, left shift, and C on your keyboard, you can cycle through different flight plans in different data cards. And this one says auto-generated search for ELINT number one. This makes me in a this makes me a flight plan to attack a target based on my ELINT data. By the way, you can also go backwards through the data cards with left control, left alt, and C. Once you select the ELINT data that you want to use, you just press your data card back here, and then you click it again to put it back in. And then you need to load the data into the plane. You switch this to ref Lola and this to input, and do 9099, and then click LS and this number will be blinking. You need to wait for these to all turn to zeros, and then switch this to output, and this to active position, and now your waypoints in the plane will be set up to attack that ELINT target. That was Defensive Systems and ELINT in the Vigan. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.